This video is brought to you by Ikigai Film Lab. So there is a lot of buzz around half frame film cameras at the moment, and it really does seem like the most economical way to be shooting film right now. But there are some pros and cons. So today I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about half frame, where to get started, how to get the best results and what camera is right for you. So there are three main formats when it comes to film photography, large, medium, and 35 millimeter. A typical full frame 35 millimeter negative is 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters. And unsurprisingly, half frame is around half of that. So essentially you are getting double the amount of exposures on a roll of film, which is pretty cool, especially considering the prices of film right now. So on a 36 exposure roll, you would end up with 72 exposures. So half frame film cameras are a lot less common than their full frame counterparts, but there are still quite a few options available and some of them are pretty quirky and interesting. If you don't want to blow the budget, but you still want to try out this format, there are definitely options for you. Brito and Kodak recently released a plastic reusable camera that is half frame. And it's a great option if you are on a budget it does have a plastic lens. So obviously it's not going to be the best image quality, but it is a really fun way to get started. Dip a toe in the half frame pool and see if it's for you. If you are wanting a more spec option, there is plenty to choose from. Olympus were a major player in the half frame format and made some excellent cameras that featured those legendary Zoico lenses like the Pen EE and D models. They are really similar to an Olympus trip and have that vintage retro rangefinder look, which I love. Minolta made a model called the Repo, which is fairly similar to the Olympus cameras. Canon made the Demi, which is a diminutive little beauty that I would love to get my hands on one day. One half frame camera that I think is super kitsch and cool and unlike any other camera, it has that 80s Japanese contemporary style that I really love is the Kyocera Samurai. They look more like a retro camcorder than a stills camera when you first see them and they have different ergonomics to any other camera. When I was doing my research, I also found the Konica recorder, which looked so cool, but is pretty pricey on eBay now. I think it could be those Hexanon lenses that it has. I think that's really driving the price up. So this wouldn't be an option for everyone, but I would definitely love to own one of these too. Speaking of prices, all of the cameras that I'm mentioning here are going to run between $100 at the low end and then $500 and upwards, depending on the condition of the camera. It's a bit of a lucky dip with half frame cameras right now online. So definitely do your research, find the model that is right for you and then do some hunting and bartering and go about it that way. Now I saved the best for last. This is my beautiful all black Olympus Pen FT. It even has the Gothic F lens cap. I got this for my 30th birthday. It was a present from my partner and it seemed like a great way to mark being 30. I find myself reaching for my Pen FT so often. I have even been using it for some photography jobs lately as I'm getting twice the amount of shots on one roll of film. So it feels more sustainable for the client who is paying that little bit extra for film. This is the first time I have ever paid top dollar for a camera in mint condition being imported from Japan. Normally I source my cameras from marketplace or thrift stores and I don't tend to spend a lot on my cameras, but I really think that the Pen FT is paying for itself in getting all those extra shots off my rolls of film. The most incredible thing about the Olympus Pen FT is that it looks and feels like a rangefinder, but it's actually a fully functioning SLR. I love looking through the lens of this camera and focusing. It just feels so nice. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll know that 99% of the time I shoot in portrait orientation and that is the natural state of the Olympus Pen FT. So it's even more perfect for me personally as I don't even have to turn the camera. I just know everything's going to be in portrait orientation. So now we've covered off the selection of half frame cameras that's available. Let's talk about why half frame is the perfect format for us living in the digital age. Let's be honest here for a second. Where do most of the images that you take end up? 
the majority of us are uploading our photos to Instagram or some kind of digital portfolio, a website, granary, just any kind of online platform is generally where your photos are going to end up. These platforms normally lend themselves to portrait orientation and that is naturally how the PenFT photographs, making them perfectly ready for your Instagram feed. This format is also perfect for people wanting to just try out film or if you are on a budget, you're a student who can't afford to shoot a lot of film but you still want to have it as part of your hobby. So let's talk about image quality. So the concern I hear the most from the film community about the half frame format is won't the resolution be really low and my photos will look really crappy. So I decided to ask an expert to spill the tea on what the deal really is with half frame quality. This expert is also the sponsor of today's video and the team that takes care of all of my developing and scanning needs, whether that's just my personal work, family shots, or more serious things for exhibitions and competitions. They always deliver the most amazing scans and they seem like the right people to ask about Half Frame. So I asked the owner of Ikigai Film Lab, Peter, his opinion on the resolution of Half Frame. He said the resolution is good and it will still scan at the 8x12 300 dpi setting, just a bit grainier and slightly less detail because of it. The scanning resolution is the same and you will get the same pixel dimensions for your photos. Because the surface area of the actual exposure is half the size, the effective resolution is slightly lower. But with good light, it looks better than most would think. And I definitely have to agree with Pete here. I recently put a roll of Portra 160 through my Olympus Pen FT. And when the team at Ikigai were developing it, they actually messaged me to make sure that it had come through that camera because they were so surprised and impressed with the detail. I think using the pro, more pricey films like your Portras and Ektars work really well in half frame as they're going to go a lot further and you'll get more bang for your buck. You can also go for films with a lower ISO if the light allows. This will just help with detail and give you a bit less grain if that's the kind of look that you're going for. In saying that though, consumer grade films will still look great in your half frame cameras as long as they are scanned well. You'll get slightly more grain, but they'll still be sharp and look amazing. I had a few more questions for Pete and he was kind enough to answer them. So when I started shooting half frame, I had a lot of questions and one of them was, will it be more expensive to get my half frame roll developed and scanned since there's more photos? Pete said that most labs don't charge extra. It is a little bit more work for them, but not enough to warrant charging the customer more money. I'll always recommend Ikigai, obviously, but if you are using a different lab for the first time, definitely check and ask them, do they charge more? Do they offer that service and be sure to write on your order form or tell the team if you want dip ticks or not. This led me to asking Pete what makes it different to scanning a regular roll of film and he explained that the setting is slightly different. The rolls are developed the same way as normal but when scanning a different mask is installed in the scanner or with their amazing Noritsu scanner they can just tell it it's half frame and it does the necessary adjustments. By default Ikigai scan half frame rolls as individual images but the first few rolls that I sent in I asked for diptychs which in case you don't know because I didn't know when I first heard that word that is where the two images that are on the negative appear in the same scan. While this is a cool concept and it really forces your hand to be more creative when you're photographing, looking for complementing colors to create a cool looking diptych, I do think that it has a few problems in difficulty for color and brightness adjustments. And I found a few of my exposures were too far out to balance with the adjacent image. I've since gone back to getting my images scanned just individually as I feel Ikigai can do the best possible job with each individual scan. But I do highly recommend trying out diptychs. I think they're a lot of fun and open up a lot of opportunities for creativity. If you do shoot with the intention of having diptychs as your scans, just make sure you're being really careful with your exposures. Labs are not all created equal and there is more to an amazing scan than just the technology behind it. The team over at Ikigai are extremely knowledgeable and have years of experience under their belts and they'll make sure that your scans look as best as they possibly can. 
I had an exhibition recently in Hamburg, Germany, and the curator actually commented specifically on my scans saying how amazing they were. This made me feel really confident in my work and it makes me feel the extra bit of confidence I need to sell my prints in larger sizes and continue to submit my work to exhibitions and competitions, knowing that I have the support and expertise of Ikigai Film Lab taking care of all of the developing and scanning. So go check them out on Instagram or click the link that I have pinned in the comments below to have a browse around their website and also check out their super cool recycling initiative. I love Ikigai Film Lab and I know you will too. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.